I want to show you how you can get a return value from an intent when you launch to another application and you want to get back a result. So let's start with a new Android Studio project and let's just call this return intent and we'll go next and next and we'll select empty activity and then finally finish. Let's set up the UI for this example. Go to the activity underscore main dot XML file. And here, uh, let's keep the text view, but I'm going to clear the constraints. And I'm going to move this up here first and constrain it to the top. And then I want to add a button. So I'll click and drag a button and I'll attach it to the bottom of this right there. Oh, come on. There we go. Now I want to select everything and right click and then choose center horizontal. Awesome. Okay. Let's change the text on this uh, text view. We're just going to say friends number with a colon like this and then on the button let's change the name the text to say get friends number okay now let's go back to our main activity class in this example what I want to do is get a phone number from a contact on my phone so I can make a request just like I would with any other intent using a specific action and it will launch to the contacts app and then when I select it I want it to get the return value from that request. So the first thing we want to do is uh, create a function for this button to call so we'll just call it public void choose friend and that'll take a view object okay let's go ahead and hook that up first before we forget go back to the activity main.xml select the button and then under the on click choose friend and that will work okay so we're going to start by creating an intent so we're going to say intent and I press tab real quick to bring in the import statement and then we're going to call this pick contact intent and it's a new intent and it's it's also an intent action because we're launching to another application so it's intent dot action and it's called action underscore pick now part of this request we need to pass in a URI that describes what type of picking action what are we selecting from and in this case we're going to say URI dot parse and I press tab to get that autocomplete to pull in that uh, import statement and then we're going to say content colon forward slash forward slash contacts and this will tell the application that I want an application that can handle content type of contacts. Okay, go ahead and let's add, let's, we need to set a property on this contact, pick contact intent. We need to set the type. So we're going to set type, and this type is going to be a phone dot content type. Okay. So now the main difference when we start this intent is instead of saying start activity, we're going to say start activity for result. And then we pass in the contact intent. And then we need to pass in a request code, which is an int. So in our case, we could just pass in the number one, or some other integer but I want to note something else if if you were going to 
uh, send intents, you were going to ask the user to do a number of things in another in another app and come back to it, you'll want to keep track of what the request code is in order to identify uh, the, the response for that specific request. So instead of passing in an integer here, what I want to do is to create a static constant that allows me to reference a name for the int and, and then I won't be confused. So we're going to say static final int and we're going to call this pick underscore contact underscore request and then we're going to set that to one. Now when I come down here I want to replace this and just say pick contact request and I want to select that. Now when I reference this it'll make sense I'll know what that is. Okay first let's go ahead and just run this and see what happens. Now if you have a real device with uh, that your own device that has contacts you, it would be easier to use that. I'm going to use an emulator and I'll show you how to set up some contacts to kind of demo this. But again, if you have a real device, it would probably go a lot easier. Then you can see a real phone number. But for now, it's OK. When we look at the app, it says friends number. And then we say get friends number. If I go ahead and select that, now it brings up my contact list. It says choose a contact. OK, well, I'm on the emulator and it doesn't have any context. So let me go ahead and stop the activity. Let me go back to my emulator. And um, if you come down here, you can select the application and search and we want contacts. And so notice how uh, we don't have any contacts, but I want to go ahead and click Plus, and we want to say keep local. I'm not going to worry about setting up a Google account or anything, just a local contact. So we'll give us a name, and uh, of course, the name is lowercase i, capital B, R E N T, I Brent, and my phone number is 555 555 1234, in case you're wondering. All right, so, and that's all we really need. And we're good. Okay. And allow, allow, sure. Okay, perfect. Now, let's go back and run the app one more time and see if we can get this to show a contact. Okay, so we say get friend's number. And hey, there's my friend. And I've selected it. And what's happened? Well, we haven't done anything because we're not listening for anything. So let's go back and fix that. Okay, we'll stop the process. So you recall um, when we've done this in other apps previously, when you pass data from uh, with an intent, the activity needs to listen for uh, a method called on activity result. So in our case, uh, if I start typing on activity result, then uh, we're going to give us the activity. It's going to give us the method that we want, and because uh, we're going to override, it's a it's a default method for the activity class. So let's go ahead and use that. Now, first thing we want to do: notice we return, we get a request code and a result code and then the intent data. So because we want to um, understand whether we got the result, first we need to check if the request code matches the request code number that we expect. So we say if request code is equal to pick contact request, then we're good. If that's the case that now, we want to do check the result code, and the result code could be anything. It could be the if if the person let's say you cancel and you don't select a contact, it's going to return back to the application, and it'll have a result code of cancel. 
But if you did select something, it's going to have a result code of OK. So we're going to say if result code is equal to result. Notice here, result canceled is another option. We were going to say if it's a result OK, then we know we're in business. OK, I'm going to show you how to get the phone number from this data object. Now, there are other ways and better ways to do this, but I'm just following the example that's provided in the developer.android.com in the training section. And there are some notes there. You should take a look at that sometime. But this is just a shortcut way to get the phone number. And again, we'll cover in the future uh, videos how to do this properly with a content provider, for example. And so anyway, let's just go forward. We're going to create first a URI that represents the contact URI, which is the data. So we're going to say referencing the data, let's say data dot get data. So now we have this URI. Now we want to create a reference of a column that we're trying to get from this data object and we're going to call it's a it's a string array and it's projection we're just going to call it projection equals and then I'm doing the curly brace and then it's phone dot number that's our object that we're going to use in this uh, cursor query so we first create a cursor object and we'll call this cursor equals get content resolver dot query and we're going to pass in the contact URI and then we're going to pass in the uh, projection object and then we're not going to pass anything for the selection so we just pass null, null, and then null for the last object that goes into this method. And then finally we say cursor dot move to first. Okay. Now we're going to get the phone number out of there referencing a column. So we say int column, if I can spell column right, column equals cursor dot get column index and it's the phone dot number and then we get a string from this value which is the number equals cursor dot get string and we pass in the column this will then return the phone number this uh, didn't quite autocomplete, so let's Alt Enter Import Class. Okay, so that's what we want. Now we now have a string that represents the phone number from this object. I'm going to add it to my text view. If you go back to your activity domain, you'll remember we have a text view up here, and it's just ID of text view. So let's go ahead and reference that. We're going to say text view which is the variable is text view equals and we're going to cast this to a text view find view by ID we've done this before so I'm just doing it quickly and then r dot ID dot text view and we say text view dot set text and I'm going to say my friends number is and then plus the uh, number, which is that string. OK, let's try it out. Let's go ahead and run this. And we'll do the emulator. And we're going to proceed without instant run. OK, I want to go ahead and click Get Friends Number. Brings me to my contact picker. And I want to select my best fist friend. Hey, check it out. My friend's number is 555-555-1234. It worked. So again, what we did is we create an intent. 
just like we've done before. And it's an intent action. And in this case, it's an action pick. And then we pass in a reference to contacts. So we want an application that can, that can return contacts. We then set the type specifically as a phone content type. And then we did, this is the key thing, start activity for result. This is different than we've done with other intents. And here we're launching the activity expecting a return value. So it, again, we pass that in. And then we pass in a constant which represents the request, a value for the request. Then we register for the on activity result and that calls and once we get this return value, we first check if it's the request that we made. Then we check if the result code is okay, meaning there's a value there. And then finally, we search through and we identify the value. And then for, for our example, we are creating a text view and showing a phone number. Very good. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out the next video.